Hello, my name is Kathleen Nichols and I'm delighted to welcome you here to Magdala. This series is called Jewish Feasts and Christianity. And the idea of this um, series is just to dive deep into the Jewish feasts that we celebrate here in the Holy Land and what they can tell us about our own faith, our own Christian faith. You know that Magdala is referred to as the crossroads of Jewish and Christian history. And it's amazing how when you come here to the Holy Land and you learn a little bit about the practices, it's like the covers are pulled um, you know, from over some of these mysteries of what the Jews celebrate, but that speak to our own beliefs as Christians and help us to understand also what Jesus lived when he was here. And as a Christian, we can say what he fulfilled in his own life and in the feast that we actually celebrate as Christians. The Jewish New Year begins with the feast of the New Year, which is called Rosh Hashanah. In uh, Hebrew, Rosh means head. So Rosh, the head, Ha, hana, Shana. Ha means the, and Shana means year. So it's the head of the year or the New Year. So first of all, they celebrate in a certain sense, the memorial of creation. They're celebrating the creation of the world and more specifically, the creation of Adam and Eve, the creation of mankind. One of the things that they remember during this time is that from the beginning, Adam and Eve were created to um, be in a certain sense, the head of all creation and have creation lift up uh, praise to God who is the king, the head of everything. And as we know very well in the creation story, there was the fall of man. Sin entered in, and we know that you know the serpent, Satan himself, entered, and the temptation, Eve, entered into dialogue, and then Adam, and, and they sinned. Okay, they turned away from God. One of the most important things about this feast is something that the Jewish people call the Teshubah. And Teshubah is simply the Hebrew word for conversion or repentance or turning back. And it's interesting because they say that the Teshubah, along with several other things, actually existed before the creation of the world, before the foundation of the world, before Adam and Eve, before the fall, before, you know, let there be light. It's very interesting. Conversion existed before that. Even more so, the mercy of God, which is related to conversion, existed before that. And I'm going to add one other thing that existed before the foundation of the world, and that is the horn of a ram. You see this, if any of you know anything about a shofar, you'll recognize this immediately. And it has to be the horn of a male animal, usually a ram. This one is actually um, probably what they call a Yemenese shofar because it's made from the ante an, an African antelope, many times a kudu, and those are the really long spiral type of shofars. Although there are you know, more simple ones that are shorter that are actually from a typical ram. And we'll talk about why that's important, why that's important in just a moment. And it goes to this conversation that man has with God and God has with man through the sound that comes through the shofar. So that's the first thing. What else is um, Rosh Hashanah known for? Well, its other name is actually called Yam Shofar because it's the feast of trumpets or trumpeting. It's the day of trumpets. Actually, Yom means day. So. If you were to go to a synagogue in any country of the Jewish people on this day of Rosh Hashanah, you will hear that they are going to go back to the book of Leviticus and they will blow the shofar in the synagogue. And you have to remember, if you look at Psalm 98, this actually explains that the shofar is blown when kings are anointed or when you're proclaiming the, the coming of the king or that he's present. It's interesting, like I said in creation, God is proclaimed as king and judge of all creation. But remember also there was a moment when the, um, the Israeli, Israelite people came into the promised land when they were, you know, left Egypt and came through and finally crossed the River Jordan. The first city that they saw was the city of Jericho. And theologically speaking, Jericho is always equated with sin. It's the um, typical sinful city. And so they went around that city, if you remember, um, chanting and praising the Lord. And then at the sound of the shofar, all of these trumpet blasts and the battle cry, the walls of Jericho fell. So it's very interesting. If we're talking about the Feast of Trumpets, this is the other thing that the Jewish people remember. If it is a 
call to teshubah, to conversion. It's also the call to the Lord of saying, remember us and remember your power to overcome sin in our lives. But it's not just the shofar bl um, blown one day during um, Rosh Hashanah. It's actually blown for the next 10 days, 100 times a day. There's a ongoing conversation between man and God, which is typified in this uh, sounding of the shofar so much. And the reason is because there's 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Our next episode will actually explain more about Yom Kippur, but I think all of us are familiar with the fact that it is called the Day of Atonement. It's the day of forgiveness of sins. It's the day of expiation of sin. So over these next 10 days, it's a call to us to convert, and it's a call for each one of us to God to say, oh, give us your power and your strength and your forgiveness. Thirdly, the third way this feast is called is the Memorial of Isaac's Akedah. Well, there's other names, but I want to focus on that one. Akedah is the Hebrew word for hands being bound. If you remember, Abraham bound the, ha the hands of Isaac when he was going to lay him on the pyre and offer him to the Lord, which is what he asked him to do. Well, um, this act of free self-offering, being tied, is actually what Akedah means. Now, if you remember what happened at that point, there was a phrase that was used by Abraham, and that is, the Lord will provide. Jaira is the word. Uh, Adonai, or the Lord, season will provide. And what he provided for was a ram. Remember, the ram was stuck in the thicket, and he was stuck by his left horn in there. And so that's why when they make shofars, they want to use a ram's horn, because that was what was provided in place of Isaac and Howie. And um, again, if you were to listen to a synagogue liturgy, or liturgy, when they read at the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, the first reading of the first day is all about the birth of Isaac. The second day, they read about the sacrifice of Isaac. And so it's very centered on this. God will provide. He will provide. So again, the shofar is man crying out to God to provide once again. Provide me with mercy have mercy, provide what I need to live. And the reason that's significant is because the ram obviously has another horn, the right horn, and it says that that right horn will be blown. Of course, it's made into a shofar, and that will be blown on the day of judgment. And if you look, actually, it's very interesting. You can read that in Isaiah 27, verse 13. But you can also read all about that, very interestingly, in Apocalypse. You remember in Apocalypse, John is writing about his vision and he sees, you know, the, the angels coming at judgment and they blow the horn seven times and they just, you know, come on the earth and, and it's a time for judgment. Well, that points directly to one of the key uh, things about Rosh Hashanah. It's a time of judgment. In fact, many times you may have heard some of your Jewish friends speak about their names being written in the book of life. In fact, one of the ways they greet each other is um, not just Shana Tova, which means Happy New Year, but may your, may your name be written, well written, in other words, in the book of life. In other words, you're judged as worthy of life during this full next year. And if you go back to that first uh, meaning of Rosh Hashanah, that means this whole new creation of this year, you are given the gift of life by the Lord. So let me just explain very quickly as we look at this shofar. There's actually three different sounds that I want to point out during Rosh Hashanah. The first is called the tekiyah, and that's a very long, very hard to do in, in a shofar like this one. Very long and soft, remembering God's mercy. And then there's another one called the teruah, and that's an intermittent call for mercy. It's like, so why do they have that? Let's go back to the idea that it's a new creation and a new year. That serpent that came into new creation, into creation at the very beginning and confused Adam and Eve, with that intermittent teruah, is confused by God's mercy that comes because he doesn't know God's mercy. And that's Satan. He's driven out and confused. But one of the most important sounds you'll hear is called the sheburum, sheburim, excuse me. Those are very short, boop, 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 like constant, short, kind of bothersome sounds and that's a reminder for the is uh, for the people to wake up to wake up to conversion to the teshuba so with all of this i think it's really important to remember 
as the name of this series is called, what this has to do with our Christian faith and how the Lord fulfilled this, the Lord Jesus fulfilled this in his coming. So just very quickly to end this reflection. Our Lord fulfills Rosh Hashanah because he, Rosh, he is our head. He is the beginning of the new creation. That's why Sunday is Sunday, the first day of the week, still today in the Jewish calendar. Christ the King is the end of our liturgical year. It's like the source of everything in the beginning of the next. And St. Paul himself in Colossians 1.18 calls Jesus uh, Rosh or our head. Secondly, we all know very well that Jesus is the new Adam. The firstborn of the new creation, as St. Paul says. So in that sense, Jesus is our new year, our new rush, our new beginning, our new creation. Another quick point. He calls us all, Jesus calls us all to conversion. If you read in Matthew 4.17, what was one of the, the key points of his message? Convert. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Teshubah. He probably used that same word if he wasn't speaking Aramaic in Hebrew. Convert convert, just like this feast invites all people to do. Fourthly, his voice, the voice of the Lord Jesus, is the sound of the shofar that has driven out Satan, the accuser. It says in Luke 1 69, he is the horn of salvation. That is very precise language and it because, because it goes back to the significance of the sounding of the shofar. Jesus, of course, is the lamb that was slain for our sins. He is the holocaust that ram that was taken and offered to the Lord uh, in place of Isaac and, of course, the new ram in, the, in this covenant. So the shofar is a reminder of this immense gift of God's mercy in Christ Jesus. So as we hear about the celebration of Rosh Hashanah around the world, let us, rem let us remember how it really does speak to us because it speaks to Jesus fulfilling this feast that the Jewish people celebrate today. And God bless you. And I'm gonna give my best shot right now to see if I can make this so far, so far sound.